Okay, forensics. Um, digital forensics. And uh, again, once again, our, you know, even though this is the, the technical aspect, uh, our best suggestion, recommendation is don't. Uh, let the specialists do it. Um, now, finding a really good specialist in the digital forensics field. Uh, that is not necessarily easy. There are uh, lots of people who have set up shop and say that they are uh, forensics experts and, and really do not know. Um, don't even know what they don't know. Uh, so, um, yeah, as, as with um, the uh, penetration testing, uh, you know, it's, it's almost the case where you need to know more than the experts in order to judge who the experts are. Um, what uh, yeah, qualifications somebody has, you know, here, I'm teaching uh, the CISSP, um, and, you know, we're really getting into the, the technical weeds here, um, and can I give you? I mean, you know, there's um, the ethical hacker uh, certification that, that people say. You know, I, you know, somebody just with an ethical hacker designation, I, I wouldn't know whether I could recommend them uh, for any kind of forensics. Um, and certainly as we get into a, a specialty, um, uh, you know, what, who's, who's qualified in, in some of these areas? Uh, it's, it's difficult. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I do not know what to tell you, what to advise you here, but be careful. Um, so, uh, as we start with the process, uh, you know, you, you confront a machine, um, do you turn off the power or do you leave it on? Uh, this is one of my uh, favorite questions. It doesn't matter uh, which way you answer, I will prove that you are wrong. And unfortunately, that is uh, the reality of the situation. If you, uh, if you leave it on, um, Somebody may still be attacking and, uh, you know, may continue uh, their process of attacking, um, may be in the process of covering their tracks as we speak. And so, you know, turning it on, leaving it on rather than leaving the power on, uh, may be a bad thing. But then again, um, if you turn it off, you lose... Uh, information that may only be stored in memory and so uh, you know either way you do it you're going to lose something so um, as with so many of these areas um, it doesn't matter what you do you're wrong uh, sorry this is the you know it's a uh, a difficult situation um, there are um, devices uh, to uh, <laughs> very gingerly and carefully um, uh, connect to um, and you know a battery backup power supply uh, standby power system um, without uh, um, uh, you know the little forks that you stick down and and connect so that you don't actually unplug uh, the device um, and you can maintain the power. So you can uh, maintain uh, some of these systems even while you're transporting them to a lab to, to deal with them. Um, and again, you know, uh, if you're going to leave the power plugged in, do you disconnect the communications? And, you know, what does that do in terms of... Uh, 
you know, losing connection with the, the attacker, uh, losing information about who and where the attacker is, uh, and uh, different aspects there. So um, it is kind of a no-win situation, and, and I'm not being facetious there. It is extremely difficult to know and to say, you know, as a hard and fast rule, this is what you do. You leave it connected. You leave it uh, plugged in. You, you, you know, uh, or, you, or you don't. Um, either way, uh, you're losing something. Uh, you're losing some opportunity, and you may be losing uh, some very inf important uh, information. Um, and, uh, well, we'll get into um, backups, and, and maybe I should uh, uh, talk about that here, just to say, you know, how, how wrong you can be in doing the right thing. Um, there was uh, an attack on a, a system. Uh, the person who was in charge of it realized it was under attack. Um, it was a very important thing, so it had to be left uh, uh, up and, and running as far as possible. But when he realized it was under attack, um, he uh, made a backup of the, uh, the system that was under attack. Um, got, uh, this was in the days where you could, you know, restore an entire system to something else and, and actually have it work, uh, which is not always the case these days. And um, he, uh, so, made a backup, restored it to a system, swapped the systems out so that um, the one that had been attacked was... Uh, the one that was pulled offline, reserved, um, and and put the the restored system uh, into place, um, so that he had as much of as possible of the information for the forensics people to look at. And uh, when the forensics people came to look at it, um, well, the fact that he made a backup. The, the backup software that he had used. I mean, there are backups and there are backups, and we'll talk about those in a minute here. But the... Um, anyways, the backup software that he has used was standard commercial backup software, and it uh, basically opened every file as it was copying it. And what that did was overwrite the information about the last time that file was opened. And so all of this information about how the uh, attacker attacked, in what order, um, which files uh, they had looked at, all of that information was gone. So, um, you know, it, it would seem he, he did everything right. It was, you know, a very reasonable... Uh, process that he went through, um, trying to bear in mind the, the importance of the system, the uh, preserving the evidence as much as possible, and in trying to preserve the evidence, he destroyed it. So, uh, this is uh, a very, very difficult situation.